Welcome! Today we want to see how we can visualize a lot of information in R in a single plot call. And we will use ggplot2 and then Plotly and in particular Trelliscope.js. That's a package that I only came across recently and I want to show you um, how it can help you visualize a lot of information that would otherwise be difficult to uh, visualize so elegantly and with such few lines of code. The data we're going to use um, are the gap-minded data. If you haven't come across this data set yes, yet, um, look at some YouTube videos, Google for Hans Rosling. Um, it's really worthwhile seeing how he presented this data. So we'll have a short look at the data. You see it's a simple data frame. You see it down here in the console. I'll increase size a little bit. Um, so we have 1704 rows and six variables. Um, we have 142 countries and we have life expectancy, year, population and um, gross domestic product per capita. Um, yeah, over a time span from 1952 to 2007. So first we'll check out some ggplot2 charts and then we will see it's quite limited in how much information we can display. Um, I start with life expectancy over time in Germany. It's not a very nice chart. Um, you see it's a growing trend. Uh, we don't spend much time with this chart. We expand it to all of Europe and I changed from um, GM point to GM line. So now you see we only have uh, one continent here, but already it's a lot of countries and there's a legend, but it's quite hard to distinguish all the lines, so it's a bit difficult to convey so much information in this chart. Um, another alternative would be to use facets. So here we have plotted a full data set, not all variables, but all um, rows. The variables we display are only year and life expectancy. Um, we cut it by country. I left away the um, legend here because it's just too much to to show so it's quite hard to to read this chart really it's difficult to convey so much information one option to improve on this is by using plotly um, I love the plotly package and we just use a simple ggplot call and then we s store it in an object I call it p and then we pass this object to ggplotly, so it's very simple, and um, we get the same chart that we had before, but now we ha it's interactive and we have mouse over effects. So for example, here in Africa, we have one country where life expectancy really wa went very far below 40, um, here 23, so this, this is really an outlier, and we see it's Rwanda, and there was um, this genocide happening there. In Asia, one country where life expectancy really plummeted was Cambodia. So now we don't need a legend because um, the mouse over effect allows us to um, get the information which line shows which country. And uh, so we have a lot more information here. Um, so this is a great improvement already. But the next improvement is to use Trelliscope JS, and we will see in a minute how this helps us to. Um, make even more information accessible. Um, I run this code because now it takes a little while to process. There's a lot going on in the background and we will see in a moment when the calculation have finished and what it does. You see that now panels are written and we will see what the panels show. And here we have our chart. I increase it and now we see we have one chart per country in separate um, panels. So here at the top right you see we, we really have 142 charts now and we can navigate um, and you see we have pagination here so I can navigate through them. And we also have these um, mouse over effects plotly functionality that is also present here and we can influence um, sort order, for example, at the moment it's sorted by country, but I could change that, for example, to life expectancy 
um, and can sort by maximum or minimum value, for example. The highest observed life expectancy in the status set was measured in Japan, second highest in Hong Kong, and we can reverse sort order and see the lowest maximum life expectancy, that's the variable I chose here, it was in Sierra Leone, life expectancy was never um, above 43 years, same for Angola and so on. So a lot of information that we um, can obtain here by sorting and filtering, we could also change the grid, but we'll look at this um, in the next plot. Um, because I want to show you one last extension, it's possible to add even more information. Uh, we can calculate so-called cognostics, um, and I selected two that I want to include in the data. One is delta life expectancy, so the difference between maximum and minimum life expectancy. We calculate this here uh, using um, dplyr syntax, so it's quite neat. We group by country and then calculate the difference between maximum and minimum life expectancy per country. So it's just a few lines of code to do this for all 142 countries. And the next thing I want to do is I want to calculate R squared for a simple linear model explaining life expectancy just by year. We see we have a growing trend in most countries, but there might be differences and we want to see uh, what R squared looks like for different countries. So the way I chose to do it here is by user defined function and then um, we group by country again. We have this neat function nest from the tidyr package and then we can use the per package uh, with a map double call um, to calculate this simple linear model per country. Um, note that we now have dplyr version 1.0 and dplyr also has a nest by function now that can do something similar. Um, but here I stick with this old approach with per um, mutate as a dplyr function, but the per function here is the map double call um, that allows me to use my user defined function get r squared um, and calculate it per country. I start the calculations now because it takes a while to um, process the stratoscope diagram. Um, we can have a look at the syntax while the machine is still calculating. Um, I used unnest and ungroup as well. Uh, you can also find the code on my GitHub profile. The link is in included in the description. Um, yeah, now the panel is there and we can have a look at it. So it looks like the one before. I chose this um, point geometry, um, but now we have more variables and we see that uh, we have this delta life expectancy. So now I can sort by that. Um, it's now in ascending order, so we have the lowest difference between highest and lowest life expectancy. Um, and that's in Norway. And you see this country with the second lowest delta life expectancy is Liberia, L Liberia and we see that um, yeah, delta life expectancy is comparable but on very different levels here between Norway and Liberia. Right, we can also have a look at um, our R squared, it's here, um, and maybe that's interesting to see how the countries differ in R squared for the simple linear model. We see R squared is almost zero for Rwanda, for example, where we already saw there was this genocide. So there's not really a linear trend here in the data. So this linear model works very badly and we have a very low R squared. So here, this is, this is one chance to sort by countries that don't follow a clear linear trend. So yeah, R squared is a very simple um, method to do that. I can also sort in the other direction and then we see we have countries with a clear linear trend. It doesn't um, necessarily need to be a strong um, effect. We see that um, the, the rising trend is, uh, differs a lot in steepness, um, but all of these countries that are sorted to the frontier by R squared giving a high R squared 
um, they all have an almost linear trend. Right. Um, we can also filter. I haven't shown this before. We can filter by continent, for example, and I can say, okay, I only want to do this for Europe, and I can sort by the European countries. I can get, go back to sort, and we see highest R squared: France, Switzerland, Sweden. Almost linear trends, and let's see what the lowest R squareds are within Europe. And we have countries like Bulgaria, Slovak Republic, Hungary, Montenegro, with lower values for R squared, but we see they are still much higher than Rwanda, for example. Right, I hope this gave you some impression what is possible with Trelliscope and why um, it is so powerful in expanding what ggplot2 and Plotly can do. All of these are great packages, obviously. Um, yeah, but I hope Trelliscope gets more attention. In my impression, it's not so popular yet. It's by Ryan Haven, so check it out. All the best for your data analysis and your visualizations and yeah. If you like the video make sure to give it a thumbs up and uh, maybe consider subscribing if you haven't already. It really helps the channel. Thank you very much. All the best. Goodbye.